To make it easier to follow along with the lesson, please reset your user settings or make sure your mouse presets are on the three button or regular mouse. If you do not know how to change your settings, please watch our UI video first. For those using Marvelous Designer 9.5 and above, we have grouped more tools together for a cleaner user interface. Please long press the left mouse button on the tool to view a list of all of the tools in the tool group. Before we get started making our pillow with a pillowcase, we are going to just quickly explain pressure in Marvelous Designer. With pressure in Marvelous Designer, you can adjust it per pattern piece by going to your property editor after selecting a pattern and going down to pressure. And here is where we can input our pressure value. If I do positive pressure and pressure positive one and simulate, we can see here that it has a value of one per that gravity rule. If we look at the pattern in the 3D window, we can see that we have pressure flowing from the back to the front. Now, if I make my pressure stronger, like let's go ahead and just do three, you'll see that there is more strain being placed on the fabric specifically at those points where it is being held in place in space. And I'm going to put five as well. And the pressure is even stronger here. So keeping that in mind and also noting that the back side of the fabric is all going in the same direction and all the normals are going in the same direction as well. If we do negative pressure, so we'll do negative one, it pushes against the front side in an equal value, same thing with three and negative five, Oop, negative five. So just remember which direction you are putting your pressure in because you can use these to inflate objects, inflate areas, create quilting, create kites, create stuffed animals, um, or you can send your garment flying into the air. So just keep in mind how you are utilizing pressure. In this tutorial, we will be touching on how to use pressure to create a vacuum or use it to create more wrinkles as we create our pillowcase and creating a pillow. So let's go ahead and start that next. Now that we've covered pressure, let's go ahead and create our pillow with a pillowcase. So to begin, we will not be importing any avatars or garments into our workspace. We will be making our pillow from scratch utilizing our pattern pieces only. So going up to the toolbar, long pressing the pattern tools and choosing the rectangle tool or the S hotkey, go ahead and create a rectangle in your workspace. And I like to turn off my 2D textures just so I don't have to see that fabric in my 2D window. Once you have done this, we are going to create a matching pattern piece, not using copying, but using a layer clone option. So swapping over to the transform pattern tool and right clicking the pattern, you can see we have layer clone over and under. Whichever one you choose, just make sure that you place it respectively in the 2D window so you know which one is the upper layer and which one is the under layer. I'm gonna go ahead and choose under and place it below. So I know that this one above it is the upper layer and this one is the lower layer. And in the 3D window, we can see that a new layer has been created facing the flipped normal or on the back side of the pattern. And choosing layer clone will create a sewing relationship with all of those external lines. Once you have done this, we can now use pressure to create our pillow. So to create our pillow, I'm choosing the lower layer and I'm going to do negative 20 pressure. And on the upper layer, I am choosing positive 20 pressure. Once you have applied pressure to your layers, go ahead and simulate. And it will fall to the ground. You could stop here and have a basic pillow shape. I want to have something that has like someone's head that laid on top of it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn simulation off 
and I'm going to just use the internal polygon tool or the G hotkey and just create a polygon inside of that pillow. If I do anything to one layer, as you can see, that internal polygon is applied to the lower layer as well. Now let's go ahead and sew that together using the free sewing tool. You can sew it by hand, just doing that circumference, or if you double click, it'll create a sewing relationship. And just if you choose this option, make sure to double click on the same segment point and make sure the notches are in the same location. Once you've done that, we can simulate one more time. And now we have a more complex shape. Now that I have my pillow, I can turn simulation off and I can create my pillowcase. So what I'm going to do is select that pillow and just bring it up in the 3D space because now I can place a pillowcase above and below it. So we're going to do the same thing just using the rectangle tool to create a slightly larger pillowcase and create a slightly larger rectangle, just very slightly. And I'm going to move that out of the way. And in my 3D workspace, I'm going to bring that over the pillowcase itself and rotate it so it is over that pillow. Now I could make a basic pillowcase and just leave it as a basic clean rectangle, but I think I want to create a fancier looking pillow or something like a pillow sham that will have a trim or a border around this current shape. So to do that, I am just going to right click and in this options window, I can choose offset pattern outline. This will bring up a pop-up window that will give me an option for the distance of my pattern outline. I can choose the number of offsets. So let's just say I did 50 millimeters and now you can create the number of offsets. So you can create multiple offsets here. And I can also choose create internal line. So if I choose create internal line, it'll take all of those layers of offsets and make every single internal one or every single offset will have that internal line that I can now interact with. So I just want one. I'm going to have it be at 50. And I do want to create an internal line. And we'll leave this at default corner and select OK. Now that I've done this, I can right click that pattern again. And I'm going to choose layer clone under. Choosing layer clone under, I can then drag with the gizmo in the 3D window that lower layer. And because I have created a shape with an internal shape before creating a layer clone, it is going to turn all of my exterior and internal lines into sewing relationships. So once I've done this, I can go ahead and freeze my pillow in the 3D window, right clicking it and choosing freeze. And I can go ahead and simulate this so it wraps around my pillow. So I could leave it like this as well, have it be very simple, but I want to have some more wrinkles. So to do that, I'm going to do the opposite of what I did with creating the pillow. I'm on the upper layer. I am going to add negative pressure. So I'm going to add negative five. And on the lower layer, I'm going to add positive five. Doing this creates a vacuum effect, which creates more wrinkles. And now I can right click my pat my, and now I can unfreeze my inner pillow and let that flop on the ground and we can just pull this out. It doesn't look like much right now, 
but I can just pull the upper layer and let it fall down. And I can turn my particle distance down to 10 to start off with. Now that my particle distance is 10, I can simulate, and I have more defined wrinkles. And then for more wrinkling on the edges of that sewing line, we can also apply an elastic value to those internal lines. Selecting both internal lines, going over to the property editor, and I can choose elastic and turn that on. Definitely not 80%, but we'll just do something closer to like 95%. And that gives me some rippling on the edges. And I can pull this again, just to get it settled. And this is a basic pillow, and it's still only at 10 particle distance. So let's go ahead and apply some fabric because that will change how the fabric itself wrinkles by going to the library tab, going to fabric, and I wanted something fancy. So let's do something shiny like a satin maybe. So we have the interlining and we have duchess satin. So I'm just selecting duchess satin, dragging and dropping into my fabric tab in my object browser. And I'm going to apply that to the top and bottom pillowcase. And just so we can see it a little better, I'm going to double click the Silk Duchess Satin, go down to the property editor and choose the color. I'm going to double click. And make it like a light gray just so we can see it. And simulate. And this should have a bit better of wrinkles. There we go. If you want your wrinkles to be more defined, we can select the upper and lower pillowcase pattern pieces. Go down to collision thickness and we can bring that up to five. This will make the wrinkles just a little bit more pronounced where they are. And if you're having trouble with your seam edges and they're rippling like this, you can just right click and strengthen them for a second, just so they settle down. And then we can unstrengthen and adjust those wrinkles one more time. You can always pick up the pillow and let it fall down and have it create more realistic wrinkles. And there we are, we have a basic pillow. So let's go ahead and turn simulation off. And we will export this as a garment by going up to file, save as garment. I have my garments here. I'm going to go to finished garments where I've been saving most of my pieces. And I'm going to save this pillow just as a pillow with a pillowcase. And save. Now I can bring this into any other project as a separate asset, and I already have a pre-made pillow. Thank you for watching and follow the links here to the next lessons. If you liked this video, hit the like button below and subscribe for more. If you have any questions about getting started in Marvelous Designer or this lesson, please leave a comment below and we will do our best to answer your questions. If you want more information on Marvelous Designer, check out our website, forum, and official Discord channels, which are all linked in the description box below.